welcome back to the Lighthouse Addictions Topic Show. My name is Joan. I'm your host for today. Today we are here with uh, one of our very cool staff members, Kyle, and we are going to talk about um, young people in recovery or being young in recovery. So welcome, Kyle. Would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about um, how you're associated with the Lighthouse. Okay. Well, um, my name's Kyle. I'm an alcoholic. I'm alumni at Lighthouse. I work here um, in detox currently. I've worked in treatment and um, I've been with the Lighthouse for almost three years ever since I intaked here uh, going through detox and treatment and uh, yeah and now I work here. Well thank you and um, would you like to tell us a little bit about what brought you to the Lighthouse? Sure, sure. Um, well, I was uh, I was a heroin addict, uh, among other things. I uh, used a lot of I used whatever I got my hands on, and um, it led me to being homeless in Los Angeles. And after countless treatment programs uh, when I was younger, and countless times of uh, going in and out of jail and all that fun stuff. Uh, I eventually had enough, got a hold of my family, they got a hold of this place. I came here and only wanted to do detox, I wanted to do it for a week and bail and smoke some weed, but uh, I learned that maybe I should grow up instead. Right. And how old are you, Kyle? Uh, 26. And how old were you when you got sober? 23. So what challenges did you face uh, being a relatively young, young person in recovery? Because I know, I mean, when you're around the age of 21, that's typically where normal or normie, uh, normies, um, you know, really explore, you know, the bar scene and drinking alcohol, uh, potentially, potentially leading them to other things, so. Well, um... Yeah, it was hard. I mean, 23 years old, like, all my friends are partying. That's right. what we do. Uh, me, I didn't want to deal with growing up and being responsible for my actions. Mm -hmm. That shit's hard. Um, excuse my language. Um, <laughs> anyways, that's hard. And uh, it's, it's, um, got thrown off topic already. <laughs> anyways. It's hard because all my friends are partying. That's right. what they do. In the weekend, they have whatever jobs they do, and then they go out and party. If you go to a show, like, you're going to go in, and drink and, and have a good time. And I felt like I was missing out on that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I just overdid it at a very young age. So what fueled me to actually like the idea of sobriety, or not even necessarily like it, but know that I needed it, mm -hmm. was that there was no way for me to grow up, act like an adult, take responsibility for all my actions, and drink and smoke weed. And the way that I party, drinking and smoking weed, especially responsibly, mm -hmm. uh, is not in my nature. That's not fun enough for me. What What do you think the difference is from like a young person who's around 18 to 25 years old? What is the difference between their partying patterns compared to somebody who has an addiction or alcohol problem? Like someone who, uh, uh, well... The difference is is their um, their chain of priorities, honestly. You know, like someone that we would call a normie or someone who's normal and can uh, drink responsibly or maybe even smoke weed responsibly, they, uh, they have their priorities in check still. They're either on a career path or working in their career mm -hmm. and they know that that's more important in life, or they have their family members, they have loved ones, they have people that they put first before partying. Right. So if partying starts to get in the way of those priorities, then they change it. They they stop the partying. They they take it down a notch and, and right. stop drinking so much, stop smoking so much. That's a really good point, actually. Can yeah. I bring up a point too? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I read this and uh, it makes a lot of sense that they'll say the difference between an act or an alcoholic and the difference between an act an alcoholic and a normal person mm -hmm. is that a normal person will change their behaviors to meet their goals 
So they have the same goals in mind. Like, uh, for example, your goal is to go to college and get a career as, I don't know, a doctor or something like that. So you have multiple schooling. Now, say they're partying a lot and their test scores start to show, like they were getting A's and now they're starting to get C's or D's because they're partying too much. A normal person is going to say, you know what, maybe I should focus on school mm -hmm. and I should tone it down on the partying and study more and get the good grades to achieve my goals. Yeah, that's now, point. now, an addict and an alcoholic is going to change their goals to meet their behaviors. So, same scenario, I'm in college to be a doctor and uh, I'm partying too much and drinking and my grades go from A's to C's and D's. Now, instead of changing my behavior and doing the same thing the normal person did, I'm going to say, you know what, maybe school's mm -hmm. not for me. Maybe I don't want to be a doctor, exactly. you know? And my partying still continues. So I'm changing my goals to meet my behaviors. That's a very, very good point. So you were talking about the challenge, <laughs> mind blown, exactly, mic up. So um, you were talking about the challenges that you face as a um, young person in early, or not early, but long-term um, sobriety. Um, so how do you, uh, you've been sober how, for how long now? Again? Uh, next month will be three years, oh, July 15th. So how do you move forward in your recovery to obtain long-term sobriety? Like what are the things that you do? What is your weekly or monthly or daily schedule? Like what are the things that you factor into your life that help you stay responsible and, you know, sober? Well, the things are is that I, I stay busy a lot. Um, mm -hmm. For my first year, it was a lot of program. Yeah. It was a lot of AA. It was a lot of going to meetings, uh, being of service, everything that they tell you to do in meetings. Now, staying sober to me doesn't, I don't know, it, it doesn't seem as hard now. Like, yeah. I, I'm used to it. I like the person that I am sober. I like my personality. I like the type of person I am. That's kind of why I continue to stay that way. Mm -hmm. But what always helps, especially if you're newly getting sober, is um, to, to work with others. Work those steps for yourself. Learn who you are as a person and learn what type of defects of character you have, what sort of things that are good about yourself that you can bring yourself out and, and, and continue to do, like what kind of habits you can continue to to do that make you a better person and learn who you truly are and then you get to take other people through that same exact experience yeah. and it's a good feeling I still sponsor guys uh, last weekend I took a sponsor through the 12 steps and it was pretty cool because he relapsed on me like four or five times oh, when wow. I first started working with him and now he he has like 10 months and it's amazing. That type of stuff is really cool. Uh, staying sober for me, it's not, honestly, like it's not that hard now. Hmm. Like I go through a lot of, a lot of crap in life because life is not perfect. Right. But drinking and using drugs, I know that doesn't solve any of those problems I'm going through. I know whatever problems I got in life, Drinking or using any sort of drugs are not going to fix that problem. And uh, I don't go to that anymore. Instead, I'll just solve my problems. So you live in the solution today? Yeah. Um, so what do you do for fun? So I know you're into music. How do you, uh, for example, how do you go to like a show, like a concert or music, whatever, and um, you know, there's drinking around. How do you handle yourself in those kind of situations? Okay, so if I... Um, I could put it in, I'll start with like a big book term where it says you could go wherever free man can go, right, mm -hmm. as long as you have a reason to be there. Well, I can go to a concert that serves alcohol because I'm not there to get drunk. I'm there to see whatever band's there. Um, was it a trigger for me at first? Absolutely. You know, it was. Um, but I like to practice uh, playing the whole tape through, which is, mm -hmm. all right, well, if I take that drink, then what's going to happen? Right. Said I'm only, anytime I would relapse before, it was like, all I'm thinking about is that feel good after I drink. I don't think about what happens next. And a lot of times, a lot of bad stuff happens next. So, um, 
today, yeah, I could go there. It doesn't bother me because uh, that side of it, it, it's not appealing. And also, I know, like, in life, it's not going anywhere. Let's be real. Drugs and alcohol always are gonna always going to be there. So, for me, how do I not let it affect me? Um, I have a reason to be there. Like, I'm there to see the band. So, I'm actually enjoying it more because I'm focusing more of my time and energy towards the band that's playing. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm playing a show, that's why I'm there. I'm that's playing right. a show. I totally forgot you're the bass player of the band as well, right? Yeah, we're all sober. We're called Payaso. It means Check clown. it out. What's it your Facebook? <laughs> Payaso Punks. Uh, how many people are watching this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they, Whether they are or aren't. We're, we're, uh, we're a punk band. Uh, a lot of the members are old enough to be my dad, but that's okay. Um, and uh, you look us up, Payaso, it means clown in Spanish, and uh, we're playing a show on Friday, too. <laughs> so let me promote some stuff real yeah. quick. We're playing a show on Friday, Doheny Saloon, San Juan Capistrano. Actually, wow. a lot of sober people having fun. Now we can get back to the topic. Okay. Well, what else do you do for fun? So you, um, you play in your band, you go to concerts or music events. Um, I know you... You're a little bit artistic too, right? It's an artistic. artistic. Yes. Artistic, <laughs> uh -huh. yes. I uh, do a lot of uh, art. Um, I draw a lot. I apprentice at a tattoo shop. Um, I'm into that sort of side. And when I was, uh, when I was using drugs and uh, drinking, I didn't really get in touch with any of that side of myself. So, um, yeah, I do that as well. Do you feel like you're more creative now that you're sober or just more present in in what you do the second one for sure yeah. you know uh, i mean i enjoyed music and i liked to do art when i was getting loaded but the thing the was i was limiting my potential you Very know true. i'm not it goes back to what i was saying with priorities it wasn't a top priority i wasn't focusing on that as a priority mm -hmm. i was um um uh, you know, I was getting high first, and then I do whatever else in life. Like, but my first go-to is like, I gotta, I gotta get well, or else mm -hmm. my whole day is just surrounded about how can I get well. So, I'm not limiting my potential anymore. Right. Um, so, okay. Do you have any other advice for uh, young people who are in recovery? Absolutely. Uh, I got. Here's the advice. Um. <clears throat> Believe me, I went to AA. I uh, I would be the first, and I would always say that the twelve steps in AA didn't work for me. Sobriety didn't work for me. That I was just destined to be a drug addict. Mm -hmm. And um, this time around, I uh, I actually got to know what the twelve steps are. Mm -hmm. And uh, to tell you the truth. Like, um, I didn't know what the 12 steps were every time I said those steps don't work for me mm -hmm. because I never actually did them. So my advice to anyone young is set the same goal that I did. And my goal was do one through 12 and finish the whole 12 steps. And then if you want to drink, if you want to use, go ahead and do it after. But the truth is, I set that, that goal to finish the 12 steps first because I knew drugs and alcohol wouldn't go anywhere. And the truth is, I didn't want to pick up. I didn't want to drink after halfway through those steps. So, you know, it, it's, it's a matter of just finish something you start. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you do that, give it an honest try and actually know what they are, then you know whether or not they work for you. And chances are, either way, your life's going to get better than when you got into detox. Very true. Do you have anything you'd like to say to families or loved one um, of an addicted person? Um, hang in there. You know, uh, you can love them absolutely, and it's hard not to enable them. Yeah. Uh, it really is. But all in all, speaking from the the experience of a drug addict myself is that. I had to have the willingness and the gifts of desperation. I had to want a better life and I needed to take action. So listen to your loved one who's suffering from addiction or alcoholism. Mm -hmm. Listen to them through their actions, not their intentions, mm -hmm. not what they're saying that they're gonna do. 
uh, listen to them through their actions. If their actions say that they want to change their life, if their actions show that they want to be a better person and stay sober, then be there for them and help. Otherwise, they really do need to find their way. And when they do, just be there for them and love and support. Beautiful. And would you like to say anything to somebody who is currently struggling with an addiction? Um... Yeah, there's a few. I'm not going to break their anonymity or anything, but, like, you know, just... It's really hard when you're wrapped up in the addiction. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really hard to get back in the mindset of recovery. It's hard to just pick up the pieces again. Um, best I could say is, you know what? I'm here when you're ready for help. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go anywhere. And, you know, once you try this thing again... I'm like you're not alone. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Uh, just a reminder, we are here every Thursday, facebook.com slash lighthouse treatment. Thank you so much, Kyle, for joining us. You've been thank awesome. Thank you. See you guys later. Have a great week. Later.